In this video, we are going to work on placing a wall inside um, the structure. So we have the perimeter stud wall already built, and we're going to focus on a wall that crosses through the middle of the structure. So basically, on the interior of a house or other frame structure, you have two kinds of walls. Some are bearing walls and some are non-load bearing. So what's the difference? Basically, a bearing wall means that there are framing members that are resting on that wall. And if you were to remove the wall, you have the possibility of a structural collapse. A non-bearing wall, on the other hand, is a wall that isn't doing any sort of structural work in that sense. And if you wanted to, you could remove the wall without compromising the, the structure. So in our Revit model, we have below this floor level, a girder, and we have eye joists that are framing in this direction, and they're bearing on this. Now we don't have, a, um, the eye joists do not cross all the way. This is a 40 foot span that would require a rather large structural member. So instead they are 20 feet and they join on top of this girder. Now, if I go to the sections, so I'm gonna click on section number two here. This section is cut through the middle of my structure. So let's go to the level one so you can see where this is happening. So here's my, my target, all right? If it was over here from before, you can just sort of drag it in um, to this location, and I'm going to turn it so it's facing towards the west. Then I'm going to go to section two. All right, so here is that girder, and here's an eye joist and an eye joist. And what we're going to be doing is adding a bearing wall sitting on top. Okay, now I have some options here. I can put a load bearing wall across here. Um, and the reason that we need one is because on the level above, we're going to have the same condition where eye joists will frame in the north-south direction, and they're going to they need to bear on something. Now, I could put a beam all the way across and insert a few columns. You know, the the, the optimal place to put them would be above the columns that are in the crawl space. So, if I go to section number one. I could put columns in these locations and a beam running across the top. But just to kind of illustrate how the bearing wall works, we're going to do that for this assignment. So I'm going to go to level one. And I'm going to be bringing in a plate, the bottom plate, along this column line, right? Now, Instead of doing it with a two by six, I'm gonna construct this bearing wall using two by fours. Now, technically for the exterior walls, in terms of the structural loading, we could have made this out of two by fours. But the reason we go with the two by six is it gives us more space to get our bat insulation. So for the exterior walls, which we're gonna insulate, those will be two by sixes. But interior walls, um, separating rooms, can be built out of two by fours. So I have some plates in here. I'm going to go to beam. This is um, plates two by six. Now, I am, so I would suggest that you rename the one that's there. If you made one called plates, I would rename it to be two by sixes. So how do you do that? Let's say I, I hadn't done this previously. I click on rename and add two by six. Okay. Now I'm going to just cancel that out. Once you have this renamed, you can go to edit type and let's duplicate it. And this one will be called a two by four. Okay. And for this B dimension, I'm going to change it to a three and a half inch dimension, Y, and OK. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and place that bottom plate. So I'll click here, and then I'll go all the way across 
and click here. Okay, now let's cut it a little bit short. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna to go to modify and use the alignment tool to extend it. And I'll do the same thing over on this side. Right now, what I'm gonna do is go to, my, go to my section number two here. So I wanna see where it is vertically and I can see it's too low. And I'm gonna adjust the scale here so I can see the details a little bit more. It's gotta sit on top of the subfloor. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna raise it up to 1.5 and end level will be also 1.5 apply. Okay. I'll change that back to one eighth. Right, and let's take a look at this in 3D. Okay, so there is that plate running all the way across. Now, you know, it wouldn't make any sense to not have some kind of opening in this um, in this wall. Um, so I'm gonna go back to level one and I'm gonna insert a break. So this is the tool right here, split element. I'm gonna click on that. And for the moment, I'm just gonna snap at a couple of points. Okay, let's click here and check some dimensions. I'm gonna delete that middle part. I'm gonna have a doorway here or an opening in the wall, not necessarily a doorway. And a half, you know, it ultimately doesn't matter where this is going to be. Um, so I'm not going to specify specific dimensions for this. But I would say that you want the opening to be, you know, somewhere between four and five feet. So you can click on it and adjust its placement. Okay, maybe what I'll do is move that section cut right there. Anyway, um, all right, so now we have a plate with a break in it that will give me a spot for me to place an opening in the wall. Let's go back to the 3D view and there is our plate. Now here's another page from your textbook. Um, and what we're doing is something similar to what we see in this middle detail B, interior bearing wall. Now this is showing a steel beam below here, but the concept is the same. We have a PSL beam or girder that's below here. We've placed this bottom plate and now we're gonna begin adding the studs. Stud height is going to be the same as the studs that we used on the perimeter wall. Um, and we'll get to some more details about that in just a moment. Okay, so back in the Revit file, um, we have these studs that we made out of timber columns. Um, and I'm gonna go back to um, level one and I'm gonna go to structure column. This is my two by six timber column. I'm gonna edit the type, duplicate, and I'm gonna need one that's a two by four. Say okay. And this one, I'll change the dimension to three and a half. Apply, okay. All right, and I'll go ahead and place one um, right here. Vertical column. Let's see if we can get it in the same place. So let's see what happened here. I think I may have mislocated it, but I'll look in the section to see what's going on. Section number one. Okay, so there's my stud. And as you can see, it's not attached to the right levels. For my section here, I'm going to open up this cropped window here and I'm going to re configure it, it's base level, or you need to change the top level first to level two, and this one will go to level one. Let's apply that. Okay, I think I put two in here. Let's just delete this one here. And let's look at it in 3D. There it is. Now it needs some adjustments in terms of its placement and um, its height and all of that, and I will Go back to, let's see here, let's do this through section one again. 
a little hard to see here. One thing that you can do if you're seeing all the information that's happening in the back, if I click on this section target, I can pull this in so that I don't see everything beyond. So let's go back to section one. There we just see the stud there, okay? Now I want to have the same relationship um, as I have with the two by sixes that are on the perimeter. So I'm gonna use these same offsets. The base offset will be an inch and a half and the top offset will be one foot five and three quarters. So I'm clicking on the new one that I just brought in and I'm changing the value to one foot 5.75 inches minus, don't forget to put the negative in there, apply. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna align it to that plate that's on the bottom. So I'll go to modify, align, click. Is it gonna let me click here? Yes. Oh, it's gonna join them. So let's undo that. I hit control Z. So I have gone and undid by hitting control Z because it was joining itself to the plate and that was giving me some problems. So I brought it back to how it was. And I'm gonna do this in a couple of steps. There's probably easier ways to do this. The top offset will remain that minus one, 5.75 inches. Okay, let's just check and make sure, yes, it dropped up. Now the bottom was a little bit trickier. I'm gonna temporarily raise this up to three inches and it's gonna, this message is gonna come up and I'm gonna unjoin them. Otherwise I won't be able to make the placements as I would like. And then I'm going to align, um, I'll use this surface and this surface as the two alignment. Um, components, and then I'm going to click on it and drop it down to where I wanted it from the beginning. And they just, they need to be unjoined. That was the issue. Okay. And I'm going to put another one of these um, on the other side of my opening. So I'm going to use copy and let's see if I can place it from this view. Okay, there we go. And now I am going to begin to add some more studs um, to infill the spaces. Now, in this image, you can see that they have built the wall horizontally and they're lifting it up into place. And what you see right here is a door opening and the bottom plate is running all the way through. So this would be cut once it's once the wall is up. If you if you were to cut it before the wall goes up, it's just a little bit more difficult to keep things nice and square. So um, maybe we could have done it that way too, added our, our studs at the side and then cut the, the plate once we had all, all of the framing in place. So I'm gonna begin making copies of um, the framing members. Now with this rough opening, I want to have not just one stud, but I want to double it up. So I'm going to make a copy from this point to this point, and I'll do the same thing on the other side of my opening, copy here to here. Okay, and then I'm going to make copies of that. Now again, you'll notice that I didn't put the opening in any relationship to the framing members. And that would be typical. I mean, you, you know, where that door location is going to be set, it's going to be set based on what the needs of the room are and other kinds of design considerations. Um, but for my first copy here, I'm going to place it centered on the joist. And then I'll I'll make a series of arrays to fill in that space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, array. Okay, number eight, 16 inches in center. And I just need to make one more copy. 
So unlike the plywood, you know, for the drywall, you're going to end up having, you know, a number of cut pieces. Um, you know, ultimately you want to prevent that as much as possible, but um, I'm going to go ahead and add another member that's right up against here. So I'll do that in level one. I'll go to copy and I'll copy this from copy from this point to here. Now we will have a condition here where we don't have a place to nail um, or screw in the drywall. So we're going to need to bring in some framing for that. In the textbook, there are some examples of details where you have a wall that intersects another wall. Um, in these cases, there's no framing to attach the, um, this wall to. So you can see here there's some blocks. And in this case, a, a one by eight is used on top of a block that spans between studs. And this is another variation. Now we have a situation where the stud is right here. So we need to provide some kind of nailing surface for the drywall. So here is um, one possibility. You could turn the, the stud so that you have a corner condition. So it would enable me to install a drywall sheet here and another one here. So I'm going to make a copy of this one and place it uh, here temporarily. And then I'll just move it from that intersection there into the corner. Let me change my scale so I can make sure it's doing what I want. It's not. So I'm going to use some alignment tools to get it into position. Save my project. Align like so. And then I'll, I'll make a copy of this one from here to here. OK. So there's a number of ways of framing that out, depending on the dimension that you have to work with. So I'll continue um, with my framing. Um, I'm going to make a change this back to one eight. Um, make a copy of this. And let's move it down. Let's see here. Um, we'll try ninety six inches. And let's check what kind of spacing I have here. A little bit far. Let me check again, come to the center, it's a little bit far. So I'm gonna actually make another copy of this one and place it right here. The years might look a little bit different depending on where you put your opening. And let's do an array. Okay. I'm gonna make, maybe let's try 10 of them. 16 inches. And I need a few more. Should have done. Let's make a copy. Do copies, arrays, whatever you need to get the condition to look like what we have at the other end. Copy. And we want this detail to look like we have at the other end of the wall. Okay, so there's that part of the wall assembly completed. And here's what we have in 3D. 